Hi, I'm John Mullaney, and this is how I got started. So when I was growing up, there were 1,000 million comedians on TV all the time. The first comedian I ever saw was a guy named Dennis Wolfberg, who was a Chicago-based comedian. He was on cable. I liked like The Amazing Jonathan. I liked Bobcat Goldthwait, Comic Relief, those specials. I'd watch all those. David Byrne was a big influence because when I was a kid, Stop Making Sense was very funny to me. And I also thought that I looked like him when I was a kid. So I thought if I had to dance, I would dance like him and Stop Making Sense. Because I was like, okay, that's a funny way to act. And when I started doing stand-up, I talked a little like David Byrne. There's a bonus feature on Stop Making Sense where David Byrne interviews himself. And he's like, what are your favorite hobbies? And it's like, getting haircuts. And like, I kind of talked like that when I started doing stand-up. The first time I was on stage like ever in life would have been in a Christmas pageant when I was four. What did you play? Uh, in Israel. I mean, like a passerby. Not a shepherd, not a wise man, not Joseph, not the innkeeper which actually I would have liked to, now that I think about it the most, that would be the funniest role. My wife's pregnant. Yeah, I know, but we don't have any rooms. Like four to nine, I was Gary Coleman good all the time. Very funny, witty, good exit lines, like great with adults. It started to happen right around 10 or 11, and I was starting to get introverted. I do remember my mom one day, she went, what happened to that happy boy that used to be here? But I don't know. So 11, 12, really lost. Not lost, just like trying a lot of things. Like I had like metal bracelets from Urban Outfitters. I was just like trying things. I didn't know how to act. And then high school, drink, 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 smoke weed and do coke and stuff and do Ritalin. So that was like, then I could come out of my shell when I was all messed up on that. And I was funny with my friends then, and I started to feel like I am funny and I like this type of thing, but I still would choke whenever I auditioned for a school play. And then, so I stopped drinking and doing all sorts of genuinely fun things when I was 23. And then I started to become like I was when I was like eight or nine. I felt funny in a way I hadn't in like decades. So I left college and I was a temp and I got assigned at Comedy Central, so I was actually an assistant to the head of development, and then sometimes when he was in town, I was the assistant to the president of Comedy Central. And that was really interesting, because like, Chappelle's show was on there. I took the call when Chappelle went missing to South Africa. They were like, you have to interrupt the meeting and tell them, and I was like, okay. And I went in and I was like, so Dave Chappelle's gone. And they're like, yeah, I know, like, because Dave Chappelle was often three to four hours late. So they were like, we know he's late, you know? And I was like, no, they say he's gone. And they were like, health and safety issue? And I was like, I went back to the phone. I was like, is it a health and safety issue? And they were like, yes. And I was like, it's a health and safety issue. They wanted to get season three of Chappelle, the tapes from production. And they were gonna put me on a plane that day and send me to LA to get the physical tapes so that they couldn't be destroyed and fly back to New York with them. And that was like interesting, but it felt like actually like a hindrance to being a comedian. So I left that job. I wrote freelance ad copy for a tchotchke catalog that would sell like, you know, candles and such. And then I started going on the road with a comedian named Mike Berbiglia and I would MC for him. And then I did a college tour with him and it was like 30 days straight. And I remember I got back from that and I had $2,600. My rent was $600 a month. Then I got a tax refund because I'd made so little money as a temp. And it was for $2,000. So then I had $4,600 roughly. And I was like, I am set. This is the greatest. I was like, I am flush. And I wanted to work. So it was that type of thing where it was like, I don't need to do, it was like, what do you want? You're trying to get your career started, but you're thinking like a shut-in or a retiree. I'm like, I don't have to do a thing. I'd be like, if I got hit by a bus tomorrow and I couldn't do stand-up, which by the way, didn't pay much, I could live for, you know, however many months and then be evicted. So I quit all other temp jobs and just did stand-up. I read once David Byrne say that he makes things because he wants to see them. I wanted to make the John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch musical comedy children's special because I wanted to see it. There were like albums when I was a kid, like Harry Nilsson's The Point, Carole King's Really Rosy. Free to Be You and Me was a big influence. That was kind of the first jumping off point. I just felt like there were like things from weird people for children. One problem of making a variety show is that I and several people that have worked on this already worked on a variety show that exists and everything gets compared to it. So 
I was trying to think of any other good variety show other than the one we used to work on, on NBC, and there aren't many. And then I realized that um, Sesame Street was the only other variety show as successful as the show we worked on, which was Saturday Night Live. There were multiple kids in the sack lunch that I identified with. Not just that they had different traits, but I could identify with them at different times in my life. A young John Mulaney wouldn't have wanted to be in this special more. Like, you can't fathom how much I would have wanted to be in the special, but I think I would have tightened up at the audition. I think I would have blown it. And that's how I got started. Though it did deviate a few times, and uh, we got into some uh, libel and slander and uh, how much money I had in 2005. <laughs> But my new special, John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch, is streaming now on Netflix, so please check it out.